In this video, I'll be speaking to you about interference. Now, I like this uh, joke. It's actually going to be really a little bit later on, you know, and people without kids tell me they're exhausted. <laughs> I like how the guy's laughing. <laughs> and then, um, that's going to have to do with uh, noise cancelling headphones, actually, because uh, I have kids and I can say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, be glad you don't have kids uh, in that sense because uh, there certainly are a lot of work. Of course, they're wonderful and all this good stuff, yes, but it is pretty exhausting. Um, all right, let's talk about interference. The general definition of interference just says that when two waves meet, it's like a love story, right? Like when two waves meet, what happens? In this case, you can imagine like a wave like this and a wave like this, and when they meet, what happens? Uh, so in this case, we can have the two extremes. Of course, everything else can happen. I'm just talking about the two very extremes. So one is called constructive interference. That's when the two waves are exactly the same and they meet exactly in phase. So what I mean by that, let's just take a look here. I'll try to label them a little bit here. So we'll have uh, wave number one here and wave number two. And let's assume that wave number one is going that way to the right and wave number two is going to the left. So you can imagine that we have these two waves that are meeting like this, same size waves, and they're meeting. Of course, they're going to actually meet in the same place right here, and they're going to actually cross and go through each other. So that's actually what's going to happen. In the same place, they're actually going to go right through. So that's why at the end right here, if we look at sort of before, during, and after, afterwards, wave one will have gone right through. So this will be wave one going that way, and wave two will be going that way. However, what happens in the middle is really interesting. The rule is for superposition of waves. That's when two waves are right on top of each other in the same place. You just add up the intensities. You add up the heights of each of the waves. So in this case right here, um, we would want them to be, I'll just draw a dotted line. Like, you know, the first wave would probably be like this, but the second wave would also be like this. So you can imagine like one plus one, that'll equal two. So it'll be something, you know, a lot higher. In this case right here, it'll look something like this. So it'll be something like, Something like this right here. So right here when they meet, this is constructive interference. They actually added up to be double the size of the wave, just when they meet. After that, they just keep passing through each other. So it's like, whoa. Um, I like my sound effects, I guess. They don't go whoa. Uh, so this is constructive interference. That's the one extreme. The other extreme is destructive, where they cancel out. So in that same sort of uh, model right here, let's have wave number one going to the right. Wave number two, however, is inverted and it's going to the left. And of course, what happens when they're done, remember, even though they're sort of opposite, they'll pass right through each other. So in other words, later on, one is still going to the right, two is still going to the left, they've just passed through each other. But again, what's interesting is what happens when they meet, right where they meet, what's going on. So there you could draw a dotted line for wave number one, but you could also draw a dotted line for wave number two. If you think about it, at this point, you have to say, you know, plus one, minus one, so they cancel out. And over here, maybe plus a half, minus a half, they cancel out. So the end result is actually really interesting. It gives you nothing. That's why it's called destructive interference. It's because it literally, you know, destructs. So the wave is uh, not there at that exact moment. Uh, this is something that's actually pretty important uh, all over the place, in real life especially. Uh, we can even do some of the geometry and some of the equations you're going to need. So the reason why this happens is that when something is emitted, it has to actually travel somewhere. This, this wave literally has to get there. So what that means then is if I'm going to try to draw this, maybe I'll draw it in light blue, let's just say. So I'll draw just a straight line. So let's say light, um, or it could be any other kind of wave. It could be water wave. But let's just say light. Let's say it came from this point right here, and I went right there. Let's just say, so light came across, went that point right there. This is the point we're looking at. Whoops, God, what have I done? There we go. Um, so let's just say, so this right here is the magic point we're looking at right now. So we're looking at this point right here. Now this wave has actually reached it by going that certain path. Can you see that wave actually had to travel from here to here to get there? However, we might have a different wave that reached it from the other extreme, the other end. So let me just try to draw a straight line doing that it yeah there we go like that so you can see there's two different waves that have sort of that have reached that point if those two waves went exactly the same length you know then we know that they're going to be constructive interference uh, but what if they just cancel each other out they have to actually be off by half of a wavelength it turns out but we'll talk about that in more detail in a second so what I'd like to do then is show you this right here so that the diff the distance that this first one traveled uh, is this 
Now the distance that the second one traveled might be, uh, you know, this basically from here to here. Can you see this distance right here? This one right here, from here to here. That is what we call the path difference. That's what's really important here because this, from this point right here, from this left, from this bottom one, sorry, it's actually traveled the same distance the top one went except this extra bit. So we call that the path difference. It literally had to travel further. So it's had more time to do its waviness. So you don't know how the waviness is gonna line up with things. That's sort of how you can see it working out. So in this case right here, let's look at this uh, equation here. You get this equation in your data book, it turns out. If the path difference equals n lambda, in other words, um, now keep in mind, n can be zero, it can be one, it can be two. It's basically any uh, whole number right here that's from zero uh, to one, two, three, four, like this. So we don't do decimals here, we just say n. So in other words, we could say that the path difference, if I put PD, for example, path difference could be, let's see, zero times lambda, that could be zero. If it's one times lambda, it's just lambda. If it's two times lambda, it's two lambda, or three lambda, or so on. This is the, the case here. So if this path difference is equal to n lambda, then you have this right here going on. You have constructive interference. I hope it makes sense because the two waves are lined up. And if it's done one whole extra wave, they're also lined up again. So this is, this is an equation you get in your data book. You don't have to memorize this, but it helps to sort of know how this works. Uh, in a different way, you can see if the path difference is equal to, now to have constructive interference, they have to be off by an amount. And if you think a whole wave does this sort of shape, like, uh, let me show you, whole wave does this sort of shape. If you want them, you know, and you have another wave right here that's lined up exactly the same way, right? If you have these two waves right here that are totally lined up, actually, I probably shouldn't have done it this way. I probably should have done, hold on a second. Let me do undo. I'll try to do something a little bit clever here like this, I go like this, and I'll say copy, and then I'll go like this and say paste. Yeah, there we go. So here's what's happening. If you have these two waves right here, you know, they have two different waves that are meeting in place. I mean, they could be meeting like this, they could be on top of each other, any which way, these two waves. Remember, they have the same wavelength, so that's why they do line up initially. What happens is if they line up exactly, that means they're off by none. That's off by uh, this. What if they're off by exactly this amount right here? They're still going to line up with each other. That's why it's one lambda and so on. But to make them destruct, you have to have them off by, you know, like this. You have to have them like this, so that they're going to, you know, the top one's going to cancel out the bottom one. That's why they're off by half of a wavelength. That makes sense here. This is a whole wavelength, that whole length there from here to here. Uh, half of a wavelength is just that. So just to try to explain then how this might work. Um, let's put it over here. So this one right here then, if the path difference is half of a wavelength or... Um, well, we'll write it like this. I'll say it like this. I'll say n plus a half wavelength. That's actually how we do it. So this one right here, then, it could be off by half of a wavelength. That's true. It could be off by more. So let's see what this n does. Remember, n can still be, n is still equal to 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 dot, dot, dot. Right? There's a whole bunch of different possibilities. But they will destruct if, let's see here now, if the path difference is equal to, let's see, let's make n zero. Zero plus a half is just a half. So that means it's lambda over two. If I make n equals one, one plus a half, that's uh, two halves plus one half, that's three halves. So we could say three lambda over two and five lambda over two and so on. So you can see how this right here actually works. Uh, what I want to do then is explain a little bit about noise cancelling headphones because it turns out they do exactly this. Uh, it's kind of magic and this is where it relates to that uh, picture I put about kids. I've actually got a pair of noise cancelling headphones here. So it's Bose that makes them. Um, I really love these ones. They're amazing. They're active because they have a little uh, switcher here you turn on. That means they need a battery here. Uh, what's amazing about this is this. Let's say you're on an airplane. For example, tomorrow I'm uh, going on an airplane. I'm flying to Dubai tomorrow. And when I'm flying on the airplane, there's going to be lots of extra noise. It could be kids, could be the sound of the airplane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these bad boys on. I'm going to turn on the switch right here. Bang. I mean, you can't hear the difference, obviously, because you're not in it. But what happens is this. There's a microphone on the outside of this. It picks up the signal and tries to draw the wave of what it looks like. Then it says to your ear, hey, I want to take off that signal. So what it does, it calculates what's the opposite signal. In other words, what's the signal that's going to give a path difference of n plus a half? It calculates that signal 
and then it basically gives you that into your ear inside. So it gives you that into your ear. That way, although your ear is hearing the outside noise, it's also hearing the opposite noise from your headphones. It's giving you that. And that cancels out some of the noise. It doesn't work for all things, but it works for some really, especially constant sounds. Uh, it works brilliantly well. So these are kind of like magic. And maybe let's uh, do one example here. We have an example here where we have two different microwave towers. So can you imagine then we have a, a tower right here, we can call them, I don't know, we can call it A and B. So we have A and B, these two different places right here. And they're both emitting uh, signals of the same wavelength. So we know that the lambda is the same. And both waves are in phase. That just means they're lined up. Uh, at a point away from the towers, let's just say right over here, right here when I'm looking, the two signals interfere destructively and the path difference is 0.5 meters. So what that means is that the signal from this one here received there, signal from this one here right here received there, we know that the path difference, okay, we know this answer now. We're told the path difference is 0 0.5 meters. So the question is, and we know that it's destructive. So what are two different possible values for the wavelength? Because there's lots, there's an infinite number. But let's just take a look and see if we can do this. Remember what path difference is for destructive interference? For destructive interference, path difference is equal to n plus one half times lambda. This is just the way it works. Now we're told the path difference, so we just need to figure out lambda. Here's the problem, we can play around with n. We can make it whatever we want. So in this case, let's try to just guess at a value of n. Let's just say n equals zero. Let's see what we get. If that's the case, we get 0 0.5 equals zero plus a half times lambda. So that means we get lambda over two. Therefore, we get lambda equals, let's see, two times 0 0.5, that's one meter. Okay, that's one answer. Uh, what if we made n equal one? Then we'd have 0 0.5 equals one plus a half, so that would be three lambda over two. Um, then we would multiply our, because we want to get lambda by itself, so we'd say that lambda is, let's see, we could say that 3 lambda equals uh, 2 times 0 0.5, which is 1, therefore lambda must equal uh, 1 third, so we could say 0 0.3 meters, if we're just using one uh, decimal to write it, and so on and so on. You can see all these different combinations. So this is how we can work with uh, path difference and constructive and destructive interference.